we want to look at our quadrilaterals one last time and put them on a grid and to be able to prove, determine, show that they are one of the special quadrilaterals or they're just a generic quadrilateral. Remember the properties of our quadrilaterals that made them special. Uh, some sides were parallel, some sides were perpendicular. Possibly some sides were congruent. Adjacent, opposite, those kind of things. Be sure to remember those. Also remember shorthand symbols. Parallel is like drawing you know, two L's or drawing a real tight 11 kind of thing. Symbol for perpendicular is an upside down T showing that things are hitting at a 90 degree angle. You don't have to write the 90 degree angle in there. It won't hurt. And congruent is they're not equal. They are congruent. As in we know they're the same size. Not always sure what size. So when we are talking parallel and perpendicular, we are talking about slopes. And remember, slope is a fraction. It is the rise over the run. Some people remember it as delta y, the change in the vertical, over delta x, the change in the x. And positive and negatives matter. That's for parallel and perpendicular. Congruent lengths, we're talking about Pythagorean theorem. a squared plus b squared equals c squared. You need to show that that's going to come out the same. You don't actually have to solve it. You just got to show that it's got the same stuff in it. All right, we have this parallelogram looking kind of thing. So we've got to prove that sides are parallel, opposite sides are parallel, and uh, that's a slope. So let's walk. Let's go to the left and right side. So let's walk from B up to C. We go up one, two, three, four, then right one, two. That was a slope of four over two. Let's go to the right side. We go up one, two, three, four, one, two. That's a slope of 4 over 2. Those are parallel. Awesome. Let's check out the top and the bottom. Oh, let's go bottom. Let's go up 1, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. That is up 1, right 7. And then also again, 1, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. 1 and 7. Those slopes are all the same, so those are also parallel. So we have two sets of parallel sides. That makes it a parallelogram. We've got to check the lengths. The lengths look different. You know, the top and the bottom are di look different than the right and left. But we've got to make sure. We've got to prove. We've got to show. Because um, if the lengths are the same, that then makes it a rhombus and not just a parallelogram. So, slopes are the same. Opposite slopes are the same. That means we have two sets of parallel sides. Awesome. Drops us into parallelogram. Now, on the next slide, we're going to check the length of the sides to see if it's a special parallelogram. Alrighty, we're going to try and see how big these sides are. Well, you got to understand that each of those sides, because they're on a slant, are part of a right triangle. And let's look at the bottom side. It's part of this right triangle. And the right triangle has a side of 1 and a side of 7. So the hypotenuse, which is our BE, so we have 7 squared plus 1 squared equals c squared. I don't actually have to solve it. I just got to show that the other side is the same. So let's look at the right triangle for the other side. It's a 1 and a 7. So amazing enough, it's also 7 squared plus 1 squared equals c squared. So those opposites are congruent. Now what we were going after was proving that um, all four sides weren't the same. So, we kind of actually look at this. That's 7 squared is 49 and 1 squared is 1. So that's going to be, that's going to be 50 on that side. So I know I got to do Pythagorean theorem for the right and the left side and show that it doesn't come up to 50. Because they got to be different. Although if it comes up to 50, they are, um, it's around us. So, we have a right triangle here. It's 2 and 4. So we have 2 squared plus 4 squared equals c squared, which means we have 4 and 16, 
which is 20. Okay, and the other side is also a 2 by 4. So that's also going to be tw a 20 thing for that. I don't care that the answer is actually this side is, you know, 4.6 and this side is, you know, 7.1 kind of thing. I just got to show that they're not exactly the same for the green side and the yeah, brownish orange side to show that it's a that's just a parallelogram and not a rhombus. Now, look at the numbers we're using. Aren't those the same numbers as slope? Yes, they are. But they're used in a different way. So you got to remember, slope, you're writing a fraction. You're writing those numbers as a fraction, rise over run. Pythagorean theorem, it's a squared plus b squared. That's how you do every problem. Looking for this, whether things are parallel, things are perpendicular, or things are congruent, not congruent kind of thing. All right, we're going to talk about one more thing because we've got to be able to determine if things are perpendicular to know if we actually have a rectangle or actually have a square. It has to do with the slopes. And one slope is downhill, one slope is uphill. Doesn't matter which one, but one slope's downhill, one slope's uphill. Therefore, one of the slopes has got to be negative, and the other slope is going to be positive. Now, here's the other thing. Um, let's say the slope on the left is a negative three halves. The slope for the right one, in order to be perpendicular, has to be positive, and the numbers have to flip. It's going to be a two over three slope. So, one's got to be positive, one's got to be negative, and the numbers have to change places. That's perpendicular. So, let me make up some other numbers. Let us say we have a slope of know, 5 over 3. In order for something to be perpendicular to that, its slope has to be... Negative, 3 over 5. So that's what you got to compare.